My name is B.L. Miller, and uh, I, this this question or this answer I'm going to help out with comes from Ch uh, Jason Chad, and what he wants to know is how to do a proper pre-trip. Um, well, Jason, the point of the matter is there's a bunch of ways to do this, uh, and everybody's going to have their opinion, and some people say that's not going to work, that's not going to work, but this is what works for me, okay? Every company is different. Um, but they all boil down to OTD, on-time delivery. They want to know when you're going to be there, okay? And they want to know if you're going to be there when the appointment time is. Um, so they're going to send you some stuff to help you with this. They're going to send you fuel routing. They're going to send you the, the actual routing they want you to use. And some just say, hey, get there. Um, my particular company gives me the routing. So... Basically, I take and I write it out on a piece of paper because I can't look at my Qualcomm while I'm going down the road. But I write down every little bitty, you know, way to do it. Another way to do it, that I have some students who can't, they just, I don't like them keep looking at a piece of paper. So I'll write out five different little things with a eraser marker on the, on the glass window. I'll put I-80, you know, 240 miles, you know, I-35 South. Um, 260 miles just give them a couple of different little directions on which way to go and I'll put it in the top left hand corner of the um, of the glass now before we get real started and real deep and we're gonna cover a lot of information and I'm gonna try to do this as fast as possible to keep my minutes down on this um, I'm getting loaded right now so you might see me bouncing around in here um, but the next thing is there's three major questions you need to ask how long is it going to take me to get there? Where am I going to stop for my rest? Where am I going to stop for my 30 minute break? Where am I going to stop for fuel? Where am I going to stop for food? I mean, all this stuff you have to do. Now, the key to making money in this business is that the left door has to be shut, okay? If it's not closed all the way, I, I, all the time, or you know, uh, most of the time, you ain't making no money. So I would recommend uh, coupling a bunch of these things you know, where you stop is where you plan on fueling the next day. Uh, eat on your 30 minute break. Don't stop, run in and grab something to eat and then come in and then do a 30 minute break. Do this kind of stuff, you know, as you're going. Um, so, if you're new, figure 50 miles an hour. So if you gotta go 600 miles, you figure 50 miles so you figure it's going to take you 12 hours to drive that now realistically you could knock out about 650 i've seen guys do 700 and they run at 70 miles an hour in uh, uh you know in 11 hour period me personally i run 64 miles an hour that's the best fuel economy i have for my truck if i gotta step it up to get a get a load on there on time i will do that i don't like it and i fuss and complain the whole time but you can't get it there. So the trip I have that I've got now, I'm getting loaded in North Aurora, Illinois. I wrote all this down here. I've got a load going to Indianola, Mississippi. It is, they're paying me 661 miles. Well, that ain't quite kosher. It's actually gonna be about uh, uh, six, uh, I think it's like 690, 692. All right, so, uh, Let's just round that up to an even 12 hours, okay? Um, it's gonna take me to get there. So I, I drive a little you know, faster and I'm figuring about 60 miles to the guy, 60 miles an hour, and I'm giving myself a little run room. But I also give myself a buffer. So now I know I have to stop, because I only have, according to my clock, um, and I never wants to work when it, I've got about seven hours left, okay? So if I run out six hours, I always wanna start finding a place to stop six hours from now, okay? Um, so that's gonna be roughly about 300 to 360 miles. Now, two ways to do this. One is I have a trusty old book that's got all the truck stops in, okay? Um, the next thing you gotta do is, uh, so you figure out where I'm gonna stop tonight. But I'm also going to try to correlate that into where if I'm on a fuel, okay? Uh, right now, I have a little over a half a tank. I am good for 300 some odd miles. So, I'm going to try to find me a location 
that I want to fuel at. Well, my phone is actually the app that I would use to find my location, so I can't really show you how to do that. But I use a fuel program uh, called from the National Association of Small Truckers, which gets me about 40 cents off a gallon at the TA. So nine out of 10 times, I'm gonna stop at a TA. So looking down, my route is taking me down uh, 57. And I'm probably not gonna get much farther out of uh, Illinois. Um, so, So, another good way that at the back of this book, you can just go to 55. And another thing you have to know is you have to know that numbers run up to, uh, north to south and they run east to west. So, you got to know how they flow, how they come down. Um, but according to this, we got as much as on 57. inside of Illinois so more than likely I'm not gonna make it that far okay so let's just find me a nice place let's just say that I can make it to Effingham I love stopping in Effingham uh, great place to stop it's got a lot of food you can walk to I like food but if you walk to it you can kind of knock off some of those calories you waste by here I am going into something else but that's where I like to stop, okay? So I can walk and get out, walk a little ways, have me a nice meal, healthier than a truck stop maybe, and uh, go on from there. So I'm gonna stop in Effingham. Then what I need to do is determine how far Effingham. Don't stop too short. If, if you stop too short, which I'm not worried about that now, I'm splitting the difference. So I got 12 hours to get there, I have to take a break. So you add four hour, uh, two hour cushion, that's 14 hours or plus 10 hour break. Quickest I'm gonna get there is two o'clock tomorrow. Period. Pretty simple. Add you some cushion, add you a buffer, figure in your mileage. It's 12 hours it's gonna take me to drive. I have to take a 10 hour break and put a two hour buffer in there. If my dispatcher calls me right now and says, hey, when you gonna get there? Uh, two o'clock tomorrow. Plain and simple. Um, but and for every however long I sit here, I did tell him that uh, I gave him a four hour, four o'clock getting done unloading. And I actually told him earlier, 4 a.m., 4 p.m., 4 p.m. Now, other things let's don't forget about. You have a lot of variables to keep in mind. You have, now, first off, fueling and pre-trip at the same time in the morning. So there are three places that I can fuel in Effingham, so I have no problem with that. Um, I'm going to get me my discount that I have already pre-set up. I can do my fueling and my uh that saves me 15 minutes. If you save 15 minutes every day, how much do you got? Do you math? Come on, faster, faster. Anyway, it's a couple of hours that you're saving every week. A um, couple of things you gotta watch for. Big city. If you gotta go through a big city during rush hour, you need to add a little extra time. Uh, holidays, Memorial Day, Labor Day, Christmas, all this kind of stuff you have to be able to, you know, keep into the mix. You gotta think about your 30 minute break. You don't want to stop at a rest area on the side of the road on your 30-minute break. Plan it. Say, okay, I mean, I like stopping at Love's. I'm going to stop at that Love's 300 miles from here for my 30-minute break. Okay? I like the Hardee's at the Love's. Okay? So I'm going to stop at 260 miles because I'd rather stay at Hardee's than I would be reading at Arby's. So determine all this stuff before you ever get started. Then you're not getting any surprises. But get out your big old map. That's the best way to do it, y'all. Big map here. Okay. Look at your map. Look at the cities you got to go through. If you know you got to hit Nashville at 5 o'clock in the evening, you best give yourself a couple of hours. All right. The best thing to do is you rolling through there is either stop before or after. Okay. Depending on your time. If you know that if you're riding at 8 o'clock at night and you're going to plan on getting up early in the morning, well, by gosh, I ain't going to stop. For real. I'm not going to stop before Nashville. I'm going to find something on the other side of Nashville. That way when I wake up in the morning, I don't have to contend with Nashville. I just get in my truck and I roll. All right? The same works the other way. If you're going down through there and you have to take a break, you have to take a 30-minute break, and it's dead on 6 o'clock, 4 to 6, stop pre-Nashville, take your 30-minute break, and may clean up, you know, a little traffic. You know, Atlanta, Nashville, Los Angeles. You know, there's some places, you know, especially like uh, Los Angeles and uh, Houston, it don't matter what time you're going through there. It's going to be murder so be, be 
sure to add some extra time for those big cities. Uh, another thing you need to do in your trip planning is you need to, um, some states will not let you travel outside off of the major interstate more than a mile. Some states are five miles. But for Alabama, for instance, there's nothing but, um, I know there are states, but there are states that are, you know, are one mile off, this, that, and the other. Another thing you need to look for is low clearances. You have to know the low clearances. Now, honestly, if you're on a major interstate, I wouldn't worry about that so much. A major interstate, uh, they're, they're gonna have that 13-6 clearance, but when you start having to get off the beaten path, you might wanna, you know, check out some of those things. Low clearances, weight restrictions, whether you're carrying hazmat or not, you know, some tunnels you can't go through. There's a lot of variables you need to look, and it's all gonna be found in this book, okay? Now granted, you can get a good GPS, and it'll tell you uh, weight restrictions, this, that, and the other. Another thing you need to be looking at is you need to be looking at uh, your bridge laws, okay? Um, uh, Virginia, Florida have a 41-foot bridge law. California's got a 40-foot bridge law. You need to know the differences between those, okay? Uh, 40 foot, California is 40 foot from the pin to the center of the last axle, okay? Whereas California, I mean, uh, Florida and Virginia are 41 foot from the center of the real axle group. There is a difference. There's two different words there, or two different expressions. So you have to do both of those, okay? Um, another thing is uh, weights. A lot of people say 34, 34, 12. Well, if that's not necessarily correct, you can have in most states more than 12,000 pounds on your front axle. Most states go by the actual um, rating by the tire itself, okay? Um, but yes, in most states 34, 34, but you got Wyoming and stuff like that. It's like 20,000 pounds on the front axle. So now, if you got 20,000 on the front axle, something's wrong. You've been eating too much Cheetos or something. But <clears throat> that being said, there are things that goes there. Uh, looking through this book, I mean, just other things. Um, weather. Weather is a big deal in, in, pre in, in trip planning. All right, so you got all these websites to check out what the weather's gonna be. Now, right now, it's beautiful, sunny, and you need to be able to drive in the rain, but snow, you know, wintertime, you gotta worry about it. So check the weather. You need to check 511 when you're in the state. You can check, you know, just dial DOT, you know, just go on the internet, DOT Michigan. They got a website, okay? It's gonna tell you what roads are closed and what's not. Um, you got, in here, you got all kinds of books, uh, uh, all kinds of numbers and stuff like that to call different states. Um, also know uh, what the pricing of the fuel and stuff is for this state. So I'm getting kind of off, but you got a road condition and every state's got their own number, own website for road conditions, um, area codes. You know, you got to understand that most people's delivery appointments is their time zone, not yours. If you run out of Central and everything is on Central, it's not about their time zone, it's about your time zone. <clears throat> it's about their time zone as far as delivery times. So you got to add that extra hour, take that extra hour, that two hours, whatnot. Now, only thing is on long trips, you've got, uh, say you got a 2,200 mile run, okay? And you say, okay, well, I'm gonna do 500 miles a day. Well, 500 miles a day is gonna take you five days. Because you got five, a thousand, 1,500, 2,000. You got 200 miles that last day. So your best bet is to jump that up to 550 every day. Do not do less than 550, do six, 650. Especially when you get out there and you can stretch your legs. That's the business we call when you can just get out there and let it roll. Run your clock out, stop, uh, you know, find something that's way out there, you know, do your stop. Get, knock out that six, 650. Maybe you can get it done in four days. That saves you a lot of money, okay? Because you get that, that fifth day instead of worrying about delivering, spending four or five hours delivering, you're worried about picking up a new load, okay? Um, Okay, we talked about fuel. We talked about where to stop to eat. I always, you know, plan good. I like to, I plan exercise, okay? Um, I've gotten fat, so I try to plan exercise in mine. Well, well, Jason, I hope that answers most of your questions. If you have any other specific questions, just put them in the, in the comments below. I'll be glad to help you any way I can. And uh, just keep it out there. And I'm sure I left something out, and I'll be able to add to. Have a good day.